Hello, and thank you for joining me for another quick demonstration. So today I'm gonna to be using Ansible Automation Platform to deploy CyberArk Conjure open source. So my tower is going to reach out and do all the configuration. It's also going to stand up the containers. It's going to uh, install the Conjure policy and then put a couple of default passwords in for standard variables. Then I'm gonna show you connecting to tower and actually utilizing the conjure infrastructure in credentials and how you can actually use those in your place. So I basically went on this cyber art conjure quick start guide It uh, they say it takes 10 minutes and maybe takes that if you're doing it all manually, but uh, my Ansible playbooks are going to take care of all of that for you. So I'm going to come into my template section. I'm going to go to my cyber arc Conjure lab install. I'm going to fire that off. So this is really just based on a uh, CentOS 8 install. Very minimal changes. It's just got updates applied to it. And this is going to go out and actually do the work for us. So I'm going to give you a quick peek at the playbook. Really, in essence, what it's doing is it's uh, first it's updating the host file. So there's kind of a caveat. Whenever we're creating this custom credential, or not custom credential, whenever we're adding the credential into Tower, you have to specify the URL that you're connecting to. And Conjure is very specific that it wants you to connect to the hostname proxy. So in my Tower server, I'm connecting to the host file and I'm adding an entry for proxy, and it's going to be the IP address of my Conjure server. Next, I'm going to create the directory where the um, the uh, the git repo for this quick start guide is actually going to be stored as well as all the files and various things like that uh, moving through we're going to install docker we're going to install docker compose which is a binary that allows us to kind of more easily interact with docker we're going to pull all of the files uh, all of the containers we're going to stand them up eventually we're going to install the um, default policy and so the policy really is inside of conjure it's kind of uh, you define variables which are the things that are holding our secrets right these are going to hold our passwords or they could be holding keys or whatever information you want to store i'm creating a host which is going to be an application that's going to externally connect in and so whenever i create this host it's going to create an api key that i can then utilize later <clears throat> next it's going to delegate permissions to this host uh, with privilege read and execute on the variable section after I do that and so this is also being applied as a Jinja template a Jinja 2 template I should say so you can modify this any way you want and it'll push that policy in um, but once you actually do all of that it's going to uh, stand everything up everything's good it's actually going to create several files it's going to create four different files so one of the files is going to be a key file for my account so whenever I create the account, this is how I connect in. One is going to be the admin user, as well as his key. Then one's going to be the host, which is my tower server. So it's going to be the API key for him. And then also the PKI, the uh, public certificate that I'm going to use to connect in. So all of that information is gathered, thrown into files. And at the very end of the play, it's going to spit all of that out in uh, a debug module. So I'm through the magic of editing. I'll be back in just a moment when this completes. All right, now that the install has completed, at the very end it spits out my information. So I will open Tower in a new tab. And I will go to my credentials section. And I will create a new credential for this. And I'll call it um, CyberArc. Conjure new. So I will add it to the default organization. I'm going to hit the uh, magnifying glass there to choose my credential type. And it's going to be Con or CyberArt Conjure Secret Lookup. I'm going to select that guy. All right, so the Conjure URL. I'm going to switch back to the job that just completed. And it's got it right here. So it's HTTPS. Proxy colon 8443. Let me paste that in. The API key is right here. Oh, missed it. Let's copy it from here. 
Now in this API key, that last slash is um, associated with the uh, quotation mark there. It's escaping it. So you want to ignore that one. Copy that. And I will paste that into the API key. The account is, scroll back over, the account is my conjure account. The username is right here, host tower. And then the public key certificate. So if I take a look at it, it says right here, public key cert in file at opt conjure repo tower PKI cert. I couldn't get it to format exactly the way I want it on here. So it's easier slash safer for you to just jump in here and browse to opt conjure repo. And this is the repository we, uh, we cloned for the quick start guide. And so if I look in here, here are the four files I talked about. Here's the admin data, here's the data key, here is the tower data, and then the tower PKI certificate is the one I want to look at. So I'm going to do cat tower PKI cert, and then I will just copy this whole section, including the begin and end certificates. I'll come in here and then the public key, I'll paste it in. I will click save. Give it a second to crunch. Now I'm gonna click test. In here I can put the uh, two variables I have. So I created one called password and one called Ansible. So I can try password and then click run and over in the top right, look up test pass. So it's successful. It's in there and it's working. So as far as conjure configuration goes, I'm done. Now everything else is done in tower. So now that I have the credential created for um, the uh, CyberArt Conjure Secret Lookup, how do I actually utilize this? You do it through kind of uh, credential inception. So I come back to the credential sections and I create a new one. So say I want to use a machine credential, which are generally used to log into say server elements or network devices. And I will call it CyberArt Conjure New Machine. And I'll add it to the default organization type is machine and it's going to pop up username and password say it's is my uh, root account that I want to actually pull the password for so instead of typing in a password here that's going to be manually you know just statically saved I actually hit the magnifying glass and now it's going to pop up those uh, CyberArt Conjure credentials. And one of the newest ones is the CyberArt Conjure New. That's the one I just created. So I'm gonna click Next. And in the secret identifier here under the metadata section, this allows me to put in which password it is. So I could say it is the uh, password, password variable. Or I could say it's the Ansible variable. And OK. I could even test this credential if I wanted to. We just tested it so we know that it works. And I can click save and then it's great. And then I can apply it to my job templates, right? So I can use it in my automation. Bob's your uncle, we're good. But say for example, I wanna actually view it. So I created a customer credentials. I actually created one for the uh, CyberArk AIM uh, module, the kind of the central secrets engine. I can use that same custom credential here. I'll take a look at it really quick. It's the CyberArk AIM pull. And really all I'm doing is I'm just pulling a username and a password. And so the password gets pushed into the play at runtime as CA encrypted. So I can do whatever I want with that variable at runtime. Now I can actually create a credential based on this custom credential. So I will go to credentials, click the plus. We're gonna name this one CyberArk conjure new custom. So for a custom credential, I'm going to add this to default credential type. Since it is using that cyber arc aim pull, I'll select that one and the encrypted password. I'm going to hit the magnifying glass and it's coming from my cyber arc conjure new credential next. And I will make it password. Okay, and I will save that one. Now I can utilize this in some playbooks. So I have a playbook 
that is super simple. All it does is it does a debug command for the CA encrypted uh, variable, right, that gets passed in. I'm also doing an echo to the shell, and I'm telling it no log. I just want to kind of demonstrate something really quick. So if I come in to my job templates, I will find my CyberArk credential display right here. I will uh, see it is my Greg Soul CyberArk one uh, project repo, and it's pulling my aim show password YAML file. I'm going to add a credential. It is the CyberArk aim pull. Again, remember this is my custom credential. So this is my CyberArk Conjure new custom that we just created. I'm going to save it, and then I'm going to launch it as soon as it comes up. So what it should do is uh, use the custom credential to then call the conjure credential, which will then call the conjure server and pull that at runtime. And sure enough, there is my custom password saved for the password field and it is named Red Hat. Very simple. All right, so I can take a look at this. I can click it and it'll actually display what that variable was. So generally in your automation, you don't want your uh, password shown plain text. So if you're injecting your passwords in at runtime, something you can do is use the no log command. So if I use no underscore log equals true, then it censors the output, right? Hidden due to the fact of no log. That way, if I want to say I've got some playbooks that are updating a backup user account on network elements, uh, I can actually issue that command, but it will show the status. It'll show whether it was okay, changed, or failed, but it won't actually show plain text the password that's being used. Instead, it's just that custom credential injecting it at runtime, never to be seen again. So this integration, it's not too bad. Um, it's really mostly made for a lab environment. You could tweak this, so you feel free to uh, fork this repo and make it a little bit more permanent, a little bit more locked down. You could actually use it in production, I suppose, if you wanted to. Mine, I removed most of the security features, and uh, it's a very flat infrastructure. Your policy, you'd probably want it to be a little bit more layered, a little bit more specific. But um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.